This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the HP Dragonfly G4. G4 means fourth generation, which is a evolutionary improvement over the G3. No surprise there, right? So it's in this fetching slate blue cover. Um, magnesium alloy, very light, 2.2 pounds, one kilogram. So I, as you might guess, this is an HP business slash Soho laptop. It competes with the Dell XPS 13, the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon with its 13.5 inch display. But the magic sauce here is a three by two aspect ratio display, just like Microsoft Surface products. I know a lot of you love that. We're going to look at it now. So this is a conventional design laptop. It's not a convertible, for example. No pen, you can get it with or without a touchscreen option. And last year that I and other reviewers, the only thing that we complained about really was the price being high. But now the price has actually dropped down. It starts at $1,274. It's not even a terrible configuration at that. Spending less than $2,000, you're actually looking at something well configured. And when it comes to that pricing too, keep in mind, obviously businesses buy in volume, they get deals, HP has a whole bunch of sales, but now it is competitively priced, certainly with the Dell XPS 13 and the Lenovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon and the MacBook Air M2 edition with which it sort of competes as well. And while you're shopping for that perfect device, it's that time of year again, isn't it? Back to school. So our video sponsor, Trend Micro's Premium Security Suite is the answer to that problem. Why? Because one subscription gets you covered for 10 devices. So your kids are going back to school with their laptops, with their tablets, be it a Mac or a PC laptop or Android or a iPad OS tablet and both platforms for phones, Android and iOS. They've got you covered there to keep your kids safe. Not just lightweight antivirus protection, but you've also got a password manager. So you, look, you don't have to go buy one of those. There's a VPN for you. Also, if your business traveling, you need to keep safe when you're using public Wi-Fi. There's also identity theft protection via dark web monitoring and more. And if you happen to have kids who, well, are a little bit younger than the back to school age or early age, there's also safety features so you can make sure that your kids are blocked from certain sites that just might not be safe. So be sure to get premium security suite and use my link in the description to save. And now back to our video. So what we have here are Intel 13th generation U series processors, not the, it's a, it's a 15 watt standard Ultrabook processor, not the more powerful P series 28 watt processors we see in some like the Dell XPS 13 plus. I'm okay with that because most people who buy an Ultrabook, especially more for business use, don't need massive horsepower. Like you're not going to be a professional video editor with this Ultrabook or something like that, right? But long battery life counts for a lot of people. And that's something that this has. So performance is average for this given what the processor is. And it's fine for just about everything. When you compare it to laptops from a couple of years ago, it's wicked fast. Let's put it that way. So good for anything that you're going to throw out in the world of business or some Photoshop or even occasional video editing, fine for that stuff. But the battery life here with the 68 watt hour battery, which is pretty high capacity for something that is even lighter than the ThinkPad X1 Carbon and just as compact as an XPS 13. Uh, that's very good. And the efficiency here with Intel Evo and on the platform. So yeah, usually we don't get the battery life till the end of the review, but it's such a, an important point here that I would say that now HP claims up to like 20 hours or something like that. And just testing more real world style with a mix of productivity, light use applications, bright brightness at 200 nits, which is 50% for most of the displays that are available for this. And we were getting like 14 hours or so that's for runtime. That's pretty good. So this beats the Windows competition, and it's actually slightly better than even the M2 MacBook Air. Ha! Huh. Nice. So, the 3 by 2 aspect ratio, despite the battery life, the really good looks, the magnesium alloy casing, the very crisp tactile keyboard are the reasons why you would consider this laptop. Speaking of those displays, 3 by 2 aspect ratios, no matter which of the options you pick, but the, the standard lower end is 1920 by 1280 resolution, which given the display size is fine. You get 100% sRGB coverage. It's a nice enough looking display. Whether you go with the touch or the non-touch, it's 400 nits and it's a glossy display. HP likes glossy. I think there's an anti-glare option too, but I haven't seen that one. Anyway, there's also a 3000 by 2000 pixel OLED display option with full P3 
gamut coverage for those of you who really want something pretty to look at, and that's a touch screen as well. And then there's HP as usual, privacy guard display or privacy, true privacy guard reflect, whatever marketing name they call it. So it's a thousand nits, but it's not like it's really gonna look that bright. It's mostly to do the privacy features on board. So for those of you who work for the CIA, they've got you covered too. Since it's a business-oriented laptop, we have HP Wolf Security on board, so that's BIOS protection, BIOS healing, tamper detection, even, you know, if somebody opens it up and swaps a drive on it, that sort of thing. You have a fingerprint scanner on the keyboard, and there's a 5-megapixel webcam, which we don't see often the, these days. HP is kind of obsessed with work-from-home stuff now. As more people are going back to work, we'll see if that really matters so much, but higher resolution webcam is always welcome and then they have this multi-cam support for this model so you can get the polycam 720p webcams and have like three webcams going at once including the internal one i'm not sure most of us need something that sophisticated that's pretty interesting right for business teleconferencing and all that sort of thing and one thing that is nice though is in case you're focusing on a whiteboard or anything like that it has keystone correction which means that things that look skewed and perspective distorted especially with today's wide angle web cameras can be corrected so they're still kind of well square looking and more readable as a result and again since it's a business laptop there is optional WAN or 4G or 5G or a choice of 4G or 5G. Both of them are Intel modems on board. The 5G is sub six. It's not much of an expensive add-on, so it's nice to have nano SIM card slot. And because it's a business laptop and dongle life is not what you want, take that Dell XPS 13 plus or even MacBook Air, uh, we have ports, not just two Thunderbolt 4 ports, one of which will be used for charging the laptop with the included 65 watt charger. You have a drop jaw USB-A port and you have HDMI 2.1 and a headphone jack. No SD card slot or micro SD card slot. No room for that apparently. And again, the nano SIM card slot should you go with the 4G or 5G options. Wi-Fi is the usual Intel AX211 Wi-Fi 6E with Bluetooth 5.3. NFC is optional for like $12 or $15 or something like that if you actually need that. And for those of you who are environmentally conscious, it's almost <laughs> comical when HP told us about what's being used here. We have 30% recycled magnesium content for the casing. We have the usual recycled ocean plastics. We have a uh, high percentage of recycled DVDs used for the keycaps and the bezel around the display is made with soft recyclables like a recycled cooking oil. Mm. So you can feel better about the environment when you use this too. Speakers on this, Bang & Olufsen branded quad stereo speakers. You have dual microphones on board too. Again, they're really pushing that work from home thing, but the sound on this is pretty good, especially for a really diminutive Ultrabook. All right, let's take a look inside. This is a business laptop. This is not like an HP Spectre that's hard to open. Four Torx T5 screws and use a suction cup or just pry from the back. It's really easy to take off the metal cover. Screws are captive, which means they will not fall out. And here are the internals. As usual with Ultrabooks, battery takes up most of the space. Here are two of the down-firing woofers. The up-firing tweeters are housed here. And we have a M.2 SSD that is upgradable. You can get anywhere from 256 gigabytes all the way up to two terabytes of storage and all the increments in between. RAM is soldered on board. You can either get it with 16 or 32 gigs of low power DDR5 fast RAM dual channel, but it's soldered on, so order it with the amount you want. I think for most business users, probably 16 is fine. Our usual two small fans here. The Intel AX211 Wi-Fi and Bluetooth card is soldered on here. And we do have the optional 5G card right there with uh, four wires connecting to it for what we assume would be very good reception. I have not activated the nano SIM on this. So that's the HP Dragonfly G4. Again, no more elite in the name, maybe because they dropped the price a little. They don't want you to think it's so elite that you can't afford it. It's very price competitive. It's good to have choices, folks. Between the X1 Carbon, the M2 MacBook Air, and the XPS 13, this one certainly brings stuff to the table, like the 3 by 2 aspect ratio display, the 5G, a very tactile keyboard, and nice display options. And Good looking laptop besides. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more cool tech videos and thumbs up if you like this vid.